has a number of questions. One of them, a person is on the road. He's traveling. He wants to pray Isha. He forgets and he reaches his destination, that is his home, his residence. And he did not pray Isha. But it is still a time for Isha. Does he pray two rak'ahs or four rak'ahs? Because the adhan was called when he was outside the skirts, outskirts of his city. The answer is that as long as he's in his city, he should pray the, uh, the prayer complete. The time of Qasr is over. And the opposite is correct. If the adhan was given in, for example, uh, Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah, and I boarded the plane and I'm now on air um, out of Jeddah. If I want to pray Isha, I pray two rak'ahs because now I am traveling. He's uh, asking how would we instruct our children to pray. And this is not something easy, but the Prophet ﷺ gave us three years to command children without any violence, without any intimidation, just reminding them, uh, 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 encouraging them, giving them incentives so that they would pray from the age of seven till the age of ten. So the parents should give the best of example. So if it's a boy, the father should always take the child with him to the masjid, disciplining him, trying to keep him next to his side. The, the, fa the, the son or the, the child is like a piece of dough. You shape it as you wish and then you put it in the oven, the oven of the dunya, not the oven of hell. May Allah protect us all. And he would be as you have shaped him. But if you ignore and neglect this, the, this child and just simply say, go and pray, and if he doesn't pray, it's okay, then you have a, a, a problem. So you have to give the example, pray on time, and have him with you, inshallah. In Medina, there is something known as the seven masjid, a seven masajid. And it's a, a, a tourist attraction. And it's one of the landmarks that whenever someone comes from out of Medina, there are people that would take him uh, there and say this masjid, this so-and-so happens and this so-and-so happens. As historically, this is okay to know these places, to go to Uhud, to go to Badr. This is nice. It's beautiful. You can go sightseeing. There's nothing wrong in that. To think that these places are blessed or as uh, uh, our friend Muhammad Kamil said, that the supplication is answered in the masjid of Al-Fatih. All of this is baseless and it's not authentic none of the companions did it may Allah be pleased with them none of the tabi'een no one gave it any value and sense of getting closer to Allah they are like any other places but those people making money out of these tourists they would like to have some business so they made them think that it is uh, something of uh, value special than other masjids when, and it is not then he's asking our brother Muhammad or our son eh, about the name of Muhammad or Al-Mushtaba or any of the Prophet uh, uh, names or attributes. Can we throw it in the dustbin? The answer is yes. Not out of disrespect to the Prophet but the only name that cannot be disrespected in such a fashion is the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Other than that, there is nothing in the Sunnah nor, nor in the Quran that uh, uh, prevents this. Now, Muhammad Kamil's fifth question was about the signs of puberty. He's 11 years of age and he says, how do I know that I've reached the signs of puberty? There are three signs of puberty 